Hi guys, welcome back to Chobby Place and we are back on our set review continuing on the Cosmic Eclipse set that is going to come out soon. I think it's going to come out at the beginning of next month, November, right? If I'm not wrong. So it's only been it'll be two more weeks before the set comes out. So we went through Dream League and what is the other one? Remix Spot and Dream League. So now we are going to look at the rest of the cards they haven't seen, which is Alter Genesis and Tech All Star. Okay, in this episode, we are going to look at the Tech All Stars and see what are some of the cards that we will be looking for on that uh, expansion. So, okay, first up, we're on the grass type, we have Sunken and Sunflora. Sunken, okay, nothing special, it's just a basic Pokemon. And Sunflora this at has this attack, two colorless energy, sun power. During your next turn, ignore all energy in the attack cost of each of your grass and fire. Uh, red is fire, I believe. Pokemon in play, including Pokemon put in play that turn. So, I'm not sure this card will work, you know. I can see the potential. You mean, you see that a lot of grass type and fire type tech team GXs and stuff, they have a uh, high attack cost, high attack, high energy cost. So, he used this Sunflora, then you don't even need to do so, but. The problem is you're going to waste your turn for Sunken to evolve to Sunflora and then for you to waste 2 energy for this attack as well. Unless that the double colorless energy is still in rotation, I don't see how you can do this effectively. If you play fire type Pokemon, you know that you'll rather use Welder immediately on the Pokemon that you want to attack with. Then you can do it consistently. So maybe this is more relevant in the Japanese format where the DC is still in rotation but in standard format, in the English format, definitely not good at all so let's just move on here we have another fossil uh, I believe this set got quite a bit of fossil as well okay we have Lilip and Credily the Lilip is just usual basic of course Credily has the ability Swaying Bind if your opponent's Pokemon is affected by a special condition, it can't retreat the attack itself, Poison Tentacle, 3 energy, 110 damage. Your active, your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. Mm, not really sure, not really special. A bit hard on the energy as well, considering that you need 3 energy. And again, Grass type does, doesn't really have energy acceleration, I guess. So, not really special. And I guess nowadays, if you're looking at special condition, it can't retreat. There are mixed herbs running around, so... Or uh, the big tech team jacks that you don't want them to retreat, they can simply just use mixed herbs or like great potion to help them stay in the, in the active longer. So, yeah, not really good as a deck as well. I would say. Okay, next up, I'm going to try and make it faster as well because I'm pretty sure I have used up a lot of times in the previous one. So yeah, next we have Cricketot and Cricketune. So Cricketot against normal basic, nothing important. Cricketune. 1 Grass Energy Carefree Concert, 30 plus damage. If you have exactly 1 card in your hand, this attack does 100 more damage. If you have exactly 3 cards in your hand, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. If you have exactly 6 cards in your hand, this attack does 6, but 30 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So, my question is why? I mean, you can do 110 damage. This is similar to the Grand Bull and Mecha Go thing that was quite uh, popular last time before Ultra Ball is out of rotation but again I think this is not very relevant in the English expansion because you don't really have a way to use up the cards in your hand uh, last time people always use Ultra Ball drop two cards find a Pokemon and you can choose not to take a Pokemon because it's from your deck and that's why it's quite easy to actually control the amount of cards that you have in your hand uh, that's why in Japanese expansion, this might be a bit more relevant that you can do 130 damage with 1 grass energy, which is considerably cheap. But in English expansion, again, because of the lack of Ultra Ball and other cards that can help you uh, reduce the number of cards in your hand, then this card is not exactly relevant. So let's move on. Okay, now we have a Rowlet line. We have two Rowlets. I don't know why, but again, it's just a basic. So let's move on. Here we have Dartrix and Decidueye, of course, the evolution of Rowlet. Dartrix again is, uh, I mean, it's a stage 1. We have the stage 2 Decidueye, so we move on to the Decidueye instead. The first attack, 1 Grass Energy, Sharp, shoot, shoot, bleh, sharp Shooting. 
This attack does 40 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. You know what? Mew can do, can do that better. You know the Mew which bench barrier, 1 energy, do 30 damage. Then why would you want a stage 2 Pokemon to do that job instead? I mean, you have 10 more damage but... I mean, Mew can definitely do 10 more damage if you just like slap a spell tag on it. So... Why would you want to do this? Then the second attack, uh, 2 energy, tracking shoot, 80 damage. This attack does 80 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon that has any damage counter on it. So what happens is, I believe, the Pokemon company wants, it to use, wants you to use sharp shooting first, and then do tracking shoot. Uh, but then, I don't know why, it's still, it's still not... Yeah, it's still not very useful. The thing is, it's a stage 2 Pokemon, if you want to do this kind of damage, you can use you can just use other tag team Pokemon that can do this much more efficiently. From the fact that it's simply a stage two, stage two Pokemon makes it inefficient. So I don't think anyone will actually play this card. Okay. Then we move on to our last grass type Pokemon we have Bastful. So an Ultra Beast with the ability Beast Burst. This Pokemon's attack does 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon for each prize card you have taken before applying weakness and resistance, of course. The attack itself is 2 energy, touch down, 60 damage, heal 30 damage from this Pokemon. Uh, I don't know why you want to heal against a grass type gimmick. Uh, just for healing 30 damage, I think it's a bit irrelevant for you to have 130 HP. So most probably you're going to be 1 hit or 2 hits anyway. But other than that, 20 more damage for each price card you have taken. If you have taken 5, that's the maximum that can happen. You have taken 5, you do 100 more damage and do 160 damage. Mm, it's actually quite good, but then again, I feel that... You know there are other Ultra Beast cards that does this kind of gimmick, depending on the number of price cards you or your opponents have left. And I think those are much easier to do, because... Here you need actually 2 energy and one of them is grass energy. So it's still not very easy to do. Unless you play a grass type deck, I guess it's one thing that you can just put in case that you actually need some kind of extra damage. But again, 2 grass energy in a grass deck is very hard to do the energy acceleration. So let's just move on. I'm not really interested in that card as well. It's not exactly very useful. Okay. Next, we are moving on to the fire type. We have La Vesta and Volcarona GX. This is our first GX Pokemon from this set. And La Vesta is just a basic. We move on to the Volcarona GX. The ability is Scorching Bomb. Once during your turn, you may discard the fire energy from your hand. If you do, put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. This is actually quite interesting. So, if you're talking about two damage counter and an opponent's Pokemon, then you remember DC Jui. But DC Jui was a stage 2 and it's a grass type. Last time with the Forest of Giant Leaf, you can do it efficiently now. Don't have it, but uh, the difference with this one is it's a stage 1, it's easier to get, but you need to drop a fire energy. But again, in a fire deck, it's very easy to get a fire energy. So why not? And apparently the attack itself, backfire, 3 color, okay, three energy, 160 damage, return 2 fire energy from this Pokemon to your hand. Uh, okay, I'm actually not very interested in this card anymore, looking at that attack. Because while you, you return it to your hand, right, that's actually quite good. That means after you attack with this Pokemon, then uh, this Pokemon gets knocked out by the opponent's attack, then you can just use the fire energy again for another Pokemon. But, you know, in case the depo this Pokemon is still alive, then you need to return two energy and you need to invest another welder on this Pokemon. So... It's not exactly the most efficient thing ever. And of course, again, uh, fire type. There are a lot of much better fire cards. I mean, fire type Pokemon out there. Then why would you choose this for Karano GX? It's not very efficient at all. So, yeah. And the GX itself. The GX itself is quite interesting, I guess. A great heat, heat wave GX discard an energy from each of your opponent's Pokemon. So I guess very similar to Articuno GX that can discard energy but it's from your opponent's active Pokemon. This one discard from each of your opponent's Pokemon. I can see some people might be interested to play this only in control deck. Otherwise, 
it's just lose out to all other the Pokemon. I mean, a lot of other Pokemon in the fire deck. So, we'll see. Yeah, I can only see this being played just for the GX in the control deck. Otherwise, nah, not really. Okay, next type. Uh, we have Litleo and Pyro. Litleo, a uh, basic. Okay, we move on. Pyro, three energy, spiraling infernal, seventy damage. Discard all Pokemon tools and special energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon. Hmm. The second attack, four fire energy, hit blast, one hundred and forty damage. Hmm. I don't know. Like I said, fire Pokemon, they just lose out to Reshizard, Brixen, and Charizard, and. Even Heat Ran GX, even like Volcanion and Tatanator uh, is a uh, dragon type, but you get what I mean. It's very hard to find any other fire type that can, you know, be used efficiently because of they're already out there. You don't need any more. I can only see this card being played in against uh, Whimsicott GX because. You discard all the special energy and Pokemon tools, then the Whimsicott GX can't do anything. But other than that, nah, also, I don't see it being used at all. So next we have Elden Vulpix. So I believe the El this Elden Vulpix is played with a fairy type uh, Elden Ninetale, so we'll see it again. Uh, the ability is snowed in as long as this Pokemon is on your bench, it takes no damage from attack. So it's definitely a good thing to have it's an, in a basic Pokemon. But other than that, it's just a basic. Okay, next up we have Snowrun and Glalie. Snowrun, again, a basic Pokemon, evolves to Glalie. Okay, first attack, Ice Fang, 30 damage, flip a coin. If haste, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed, then discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So, the attack itself is actually quite interesting, but you need to flip a coin. So... One thing is, if you have the new trainer cards, the new supporter cards, I think it's called Will. I think it's Will, right? That can control the results of your coin flip. This card is actually quite legit. It's quite good. I mean, you make your opponent's Pokemon paralyzed, then they need to switch it using a switch or use uh, some other mechanism. And they need to discard an energy so you disturb your opponents even more. And you only need one water energy. So it's actually quite interesting to see this. I'm not sure how to make this consistent because you know it's just uh, uh, 30 damage and you are, if you're going to do this, you're going to do this a lot of times. Uh, other than that, it's an interesting cut but I, do, I don't see it being played as well. The second attack is a uh, pure damage I guess. You cannot use it again during the following turn. And Frost Typhoon 120 damage for 3 water energy. So yeah, nothing special. But it's interesting, but again, I don't see it being played consistently, so I don't see it being played as a deck as well. So let's just move on. Next, we have the Spiel line. We actually have two Spiel as well. I don't know why Pokemon likes to do this. You're just going to increase the amount of common cards that we can get, but uh, okay, I guess. There's a difference between these two spells though, one is 60 HP, one is 70 HP, so one you can get using Prof Elves and the other one don't, so that's the only thing I think quite important from that two spells. Okay, then the next one we have the evolution of course, Celio and Wall Rain. We don't need to look at the Celio because it's just a stage one, yeah, nothing special. The Wall Rain do, this attack, first attack is a 1 water energy, cold wave, 60 damage. Your opponent cannot play any trainer cards from their, from their hand during next turn. You can't use this attack if any of your Pokemon use Cold Wave during your last turn. Okay, so this is good. The disruption is definitely good if you disrupt your opponent's Pokemon or your opponent from playing any trainer cards. Because you know usually you disturb your opponent from playing any supporters or you disturb your opponent from playing any items like BHM. But then this one prevent your opponent from playing trainer cards. So that is definitely very very good. That means the only thing that they can play is a uh, what? Energy? Pokemon tool is also a trainer card, yeah. They can only play energy and they can only put down Pokemon. So that will definitely disturb your opponents. 
Okay, the bad thing from this attack then of course you can only use it once per turn and eh, once per turn. Once every two turns, so the opponent can set up once every two turns. I'm actually quite interested in this because it is a different disruption mechanism. It's a stage two, yes, it'll be a bit hard to pull up and I'm actually not sure how to make this that works. Okay, because we need to consider that after you attack with cold wave then after that you need to do something else then most probably you need to do a bit of damage then which pokemon are you going to use to do the damage instead of the uh instead of the wall rain itself because the second attack blizzard needs oh okay never mind the second attack blizzard needs four energy three being colorless so 120 damage this attack does 10 damage to each of your bench opponent's bench pokemon so you can use this of course if you are considering running triple acceleration energy otherwise you need to really consider what other attackers that you are going to use in this deck yeah i can see a lot of people trying to make this card works because the disruption is just amazing it's definitely better than bhm because yeah you can use supporters as well it's better than you know, Omasta and uh, what is that? Kabutops that prevents you from playing items and supporter cards respectively because there's no condition to it. You just need to set up this Pokemon and you can do it. You can't do it consistently, of course. If not, you're going to break the game. Your opponent just can't play at all. But yeah, you're doing even if you're doing it once every two turns. I think it will disturb the opponents a lot. Because decks nowadays really depends on items and supporter cards to set up. Even the energy acceleration and stuff, they don't really depend on that. They really depends on, uh, on their trainer cards. So yeah, looking forward for this card. Not looking forward to play with it. <laughs> but I'm actually very very interested to play this card to just disturb the opponent. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Then we move on. We have Ducklet and Swana. Ducklet, uh, basic, okay, nothing. The Swana, uh, okay. Tailwind, attach an energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. I don't know why, but second attack, air slash, 70 damage. Discard an energy attached to this Pokemon. Okay, I don't see this card being played. I mean, I know why this card comes out because air slash, that means you can use the Flynium Z, I believe, but still, no, it's a water type. Where's your energy acceleration? Again, okay. Next up, we have our last water type Pokemon. Here we have Kyurem. Okay, Kyurem has two attack. First attack to colorless energy. Blizzard wings 30 damage. Discard a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Actually, the attack is nothing special. And the next one is two water, two colorless Blizzard dust. 100 plus damage. If you have any stadium card in play, this attack does 100 more damage. That is actually quite a lot, but again, uh, what? deck doesn't really have energy acceleration other than the people and blast toys i guess four energy is a bit hard to play but stadium card is easy to achieve the condition is very easy honestly because you won't be discarding your stadium card it's just if you have any in play so it's a very easy 200 plus damage honestly i can see this card being played if you have a way for energy acceleration and if you can find a way, then this card is just good. It's uh, I mean, it's just a basic that does, uh, basic non GX that does two hundred damage. So it's good for an extra non GX attacker. Uh, even your main attacker is just not that easy to set up. But anyway, the attack is still very good because it's a high damaging move. Okay, next up we have Shin Chao and Lantern. We move on to our electric type. Chinchou, uh, basic, okay, nothing important. Then lantern, flickering light. As often as you light during your turn, you may look at the top card of your opponent's deck, then return it to the top of their deck. Mm, I am actually not very sure how this deck should work, but apparently I heard that Chibui mentioned this card is being banned in Japan because it's broken. So, yeah, actually, I'm not really sure how it works. If you know it, please comment in the comment section down below because I really don't know how this card is broken. I don't know how you're going to look at the top cards of your opponent deck in and decide. I don't know. Oh, uh, maybe, I mean, you can use 
Hmm, not really also. Never mind. I was about to say if you can just chip chip ice eggs then uh wait, no, what? Okay, because okay the attack is churning current fifty damage, you may choose to have your opponents draw a card from the top of their deck. Yeah, I don't know what you want your opponent to draw. Okay, never mind. I'm not very familiar with this card really and how to use it, so I'll just skip it. Really, please comment down if you really know how that actually works. So next up we have Togede Maru. Nothing special is a Pikachu knockoff that does nothing. Never mind. I don't even want to read that. <laughs> okay, then we move on to our psychic type. Okay, do we still have time? Okay, we actually did quite fast this time, but there's still a lot of cards to do. Okay, our psychic type here we have Wubat and Subat. Again, the basic Wubat, nothing special. Stage one, Subat. Supersonic, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Okay, Charm Stamp, your opponent choose one of their own Pokemon. This attack does 90 damage to that Pokemon. Okay, it's actually interesting, but what do you want to do if your opponent will choose which one gets 90 damage? It's a bit. Yeah, weird. I mean, I know you can surprise opponents with things like Esper, then suddenly beat up the Pokemon using like. The attack but otherwise why I mean technically it's a one energy one second energy for 90 damage but still why yeah I don't see <coughs> excuse me yeah I don't see why you want to play this card let's just move on okay next up we have Golurk and Golurk so again basic Golurk evolves to Golurk first attack 1 energy rock tumble 40 damage this attack's damage isn't affected by resistance okay nothing interesting second attack uh, 2 colorless energy face off antiquity 160 damage if you have supporter card in your discard pile this attack does nothing why why do you make this card i mean i believe most of the deck will play supporter cards unless you're doing a challenge or something so northern thing is of course this is not re really relevant in the english expansion because double colorless energy so 160 damage what it is quite a lot for a non-gx and for two energies only but the condition is just too hard condition is too hard to achieve so nah don't see it being played I am interested to see someone actually trying to make this card works, but other than that, uh, it's really not a good competitive Pokemon or whatsoever. So yeah, next up we have Scrap and Drag LG. Hmm? I'm pretty sure it's called Drag LG. L L L. Okay, never mind. Okay, Scrap is just a basic. If also Drag LG. So first attack poison culture with one energy. If your opponent's active Pokemon is poison, put ten damage counters instead of one on that Pokemon between turns. That's an attack, right? That's not an ability. Hmm. Okay. So what you want to do is make your opponent's Pokemon poison, and you put ten damage counters instead. Okay. I can see this card being comboed by. Uh. Okay. I don't remember. Is it the Venomoth? Uh. Is it the Okay, never mind. There's this card that with the ability that makes your opponent's Pokemon poison when you evolve it. I'm not really sure what is it. I'm going to find it again, but I think this will work very well with that. Uh, other than that, the second attack shot fin 40 damage. Uh, nothing. Because 10 damage counters for poison is definitely very big because it's in between turns, so... Uh, it's definite 100 damage and if the opponent stays there, it becomes 200 damage and becomes 300 damage simply because they cannot switch on your turn. So, it does a lot and I think it will affect tag team GXs a lot also. So, I am looking forward for people actually trying to make this work. I'm actually quite interested to try and make this work as well because it seems like a very interesting gimmick. But I know it can easily be countered by either mix herbs or uh, switching Pokemon around or even super scoop up. But otherwise, you know, it's still a very good like damaging um, gimmicks, I guess. Yeah, and the other thing is, I'm pretty sure if you poison it, then spell tag will not work. So yes, that is a very good thing. Okay, then we have next up our next GX Pokemon, an Oricorio GX. 
So, it's a basic Pokemon, the ability dedicated turns. Once during your turn, if one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn, you may draw 3 cards. You can't choose more than one dedicated dance ability per turn. Okay, this is actually very interesting. Technically, you can play it in any deck, uh, unless you don't want the ability, of course. Then, just put it, just put it in your bench. And you can, uh, if it's a psychic type, then you can even use the attack. The attack is very not interesting. Okay, 3 energy, 80 damage, 3 energy, 100 damage, and switch with one of your bench. Yeah. So, other than that, the ability is actually quite good. So, you get an extra 3 draws for every one Pokemon that the opponent's Pokemon knocked out. But the problem is, after this expansion, Cosmic Eclipse comes out, there'll be Great Catcher. And this card will simply become a liability. So if you're playing non GX and you're hoping that you have a lot of Pokemon knocked out so you can draw more using Oricorio GX and suddenly opponents using Great Catcher and this is the only thing that they can catch because it's the GX Pokemon and it immediately just becomes a liability because it will give up two prize cards. So yeah, it really depends on the synergy of your deck. I believe this is not very good for a non-GX deck but can be a good addition for a mixed GX and non-GX decks I believe. So yeah, that's for Oricorio GX. And okay, next up we have the, uh, what is this, Cosmo, Cosmo M, yeah, Cosmo line. Again, we have two Cosmo. Why? Mm, okay, why? Okay, but the second Cosmo actually has uh, an interesting ability, Unaware, prevent all effects of your Pokemon's attacks done to this Pokemon. Does it include damage? Wait, I'm, I'm really confused. Does it include damage? All effects of your Pokemon attacks. I believe it should include damage. And if it includes damage means that this card is actually a very good, you know, stopper. Uh, not stopper, it's just a... Never mind, maybe I'll just call it a stopper. But you put it in the active and just set up. Put it in the active, set up your other Pokemon and wait until the right time before you actually evolve it. But of course, this one I'm actually not really sure whether the ability prevents effects or including damage or not. Yeah, but otherwise, that's the only thing that is good at. Other than that, if it's not preventing damage, it's just a basic. Okay, next up we have Cosmo M and Luna. La. Okay, Cosmo M of course is just a stage 1 of Cosmo and then it was to Luna. La. Here we have the ability Luna Ring. Once during your turn, if you have Solgaleo in play, you may search your deck up to 2 energy cards and attach them to your Solgaleo and Luna la in any way you like. Then shuffle your deck. Hmm. Okay, so I think that means this set is encouraging you to play the Lunala and Solgaleo as a deck. So you will have a so Lunala Solgaleo deck. Does this work for Solgaleo and Lunala tag team? Hmm, I'm not really sure. But the deck itself, Luna Blast, is 130 damage. It's actually quite, quite okay. So I can see some people might be interested to play this, I guess. It's a stage 2, it's a bit hard to get, but... I think 3 Psychic Energy for Psychic type Pokemon, if you can get a Malama ready, is quite easy to achieve. Mm, other than that, if you are playing in a Solgaleo Lunala deck, then you can even uh, you can even use... Wait, what? Search your deck. Wait, I just realized that means it will be a very fast energy acceleration. Because you don't even search it from this card pile, you're going to search in your deck. So the ability is actually very very good. The only limitation here is you need the Solgaleo and you can only attach it in Solgaleo and Lunala. I believe this should not include the GX and Tech Team though. So it really depends whether the Solgaleo is good or not. Okay, since we are looking at this, let's skip the Solgaleo first so I can see. Mm. Okay, we'll take a look at the Solgaleo in the next episode. Yeah, I mean in the next video. So, that'll be all for today. And thank you guys for watching and we'll continue on our set review on the second part of 
I'll touch in this in the next video. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys again next time. Bye bye.